Around your heart is a structure called the pericardium, and your heart is attached to it through tissue called reflections, seen here as white lines. Since the reflections do not stretch, the heart is under mechanical stress. Added factors, like heart disease or obesity, significantly increase mechanical stresses along the reflections. These high stresses cause your left atrium to stretch and grow larger. This can lead to inflammation, and your body produces collagen to reinforce the heart. Collagen leads to the formation of fibrosis, seen here as dark patches on your heart's posterior wall. Over time, fibrosis becomes extensive, covering a substantial portion of your posterior left atrium. In response to fibrosis, your heart's electrical system can be affected, producing abnormal circuits, or triggers, seen here in blue. These triggers give rise to your AFib. As you can see, the majority of these abnormal triggers may be located along your heart's posterior. Traditional inside-the-heart catheter ablation does a decent job of ablating one source of triggers, your pulmonary veins. Here, red dots represent traditional ablation lesions that target these veins. But pulmonary vein ablation misses the majority of fibrosis that is still on your posterior. After your ablation, the lesions around your pulmonary veins heal and turn to scar tissue, seen here in gray. But the fibrosis still progresses along your posterior and the fibrosis can continue to give rise to abnormal circuits after traditional ablation. This may explain why patients experience a recurrence of their AFib. Sometimes traditional catheter ablation can include extra lesions on the posterior wall, seen here as added red dots. But it is difficult to comprehensively ablate the posterior with this approach, and much of the dark patchy fibrosis remains. Again, the triggers remain after the lesions have healed, and these added lesions may create new abnormal triggers. One type of surgical ablation approach is done outside the heart and creates a single ablation line around your pulmonary veins, or what is called a box lesion. This box lesion surrounds the pulmonary veins and includes a line at the top of your posterior heart. The bottom of the box lesion also includes a single line across your posterior wall. Although the box lesion surrounds the areas where triggers arise, it misses part of the posterior wall. It also misses the abnormal substrates inside the box, and thus, the patchy fibrosis remains along your posterior wall. As a result, abnormal AFib triggers may return. With a convergent procedure, your physicians will first work on the outside of your heart to create long linear ablation lines across your posterior left atrium. This comprehensive procedure is able to reach most of the posterior, and as a result, it targets known regions of fibrosis. After posterior ablation from the outside, your physicians create a small number of lesions from the inside of the heart, seen here in red. These lesions target any remaining pulmonary vein triggers and ensure completeness. With this comprehensive posterior heart ablation, not only can the abnormal circuits be addressed, but the mechanical stresses may also be reduced. As the posterior lesions heal, they will contract and may reinforce your left atrium and allow the heart to shrink and potentially improve function.